the early church advertised this kind of grace that created staid followership. The fathers in the Reformation de de described it. And even in contemporary times, the blood of many martyrs advertises that a man can follow beyond the boundaries of convenience, beyond the boundaries of acceptability, into plains where only followers can come, plains where only lovers can express. We ask of you that in the day that temptations to depart from the path of truth knock on our door, in the day that the, 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 the possibilities or the notions of deprivation have made many draw back from you, may we be advertised as chattered followers. Men who would speak boldly like Peter, unto whom shall we go? For thou alone had the words of eternal life. May the stories of our departure from the faith never be told. Amen. Keep us to the very end. Amen. Thank you for grace. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So that's rejoice in persecution. All right, John chapter 3 is where I want to start this new series from, and it's titled Grow. So help me use a preacher's voice to scream into the air of your neighbor and scream that four-letter word, grow. grow. What did the person say? You can't speak into somebody's ear when he's speaking into your ear. I hope you know. Uh -huh. Is it possible? Who spoke into whose ear? Okay, two of you. Oh, yeah, try it. <laughs> it can't work now. Uh, so you might need to turn the other way. And in case they have the sound of their voice hurt your ear, you may repay them in kind by screaming, Grow! When I wrote that word down, as communicated by the Holy Spirit, it came with three exclamation marks because it was a scream into my spirit. Grow! And so I had to take audience with him if it was just a word for me because the speakings of God to me do not always advertise the speakings of God to the church. They are personal matters. So when I inquired of him, he told me, he said, tell them it is time to grow. And I feel because of the matters that he raised, that one of the first things that we must arrive at is an accurate assessment of ourselves. Not of each other, but an accurate personal assessment. It is possible to assume that you are fully grown. And so the invitation to grow may no longer be heat. It's like, it's like you have a cup filled with water. And then someone says, come for water. That person is actually inviting you to a labor in waste because the cup is already filled. It means whatever is poured falls away. It's also possible to have your glass half filled. And when you are invited, you have tried to calculate the extent or the intensity of your thirst. And you feel that water half in the cup is good enough for you. So it won't be that the cup is filled, but you think that you do not need to go further up the cup. The Lord said, say to them, it is time to grow. And so I'm going to do an introduction today. So the theme will just be grow. Um, and then from Sunday, the Lord will lead me into different aspects of this invitation onto the experience of growth. So John chapter 3, verse 1 to 3, that's where we start from. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. 
The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see. The word there is perceive. It's a congregation of the five possible senses in one. He cannot hear, he cannot smell, he cannot feel, he cannot taste, and um, he cannot actually see visual. The kingdom of God. Amen. Because I've done a lot of work on this portion of scripture, I love the portion so much because I like this born again thing so much. It's a foundation for all of our experiences in the economy of God. I won't go into all the details. So by the time you pick about, about 10 sermons, you, you must have heard me talk about John chapter 3 or, or, or John chapter um, 16. 12, 13, they are my very much loved verses. But my emphasis here is that a man of this ranking, and you may want to view again to peep into how highly ranked the man Nicodemus was. His importance in this discussion was foundationally advertised by a name because the Bible rarely in the New Testament mentions too many names. The word certain is used to define the average person. Are you with me? He was singled out so that if you, you so that it could be easy for you to identify him. He was a man of great stature in the midst of the Jews. He was a man who had um, an essence or who, who, who functioned in an area of the Jewish expression that was not unique to him. Jesus was more largely recognized as a teacher and it was in that same functional office that Nicodemus expressed, join me in five minutes, exactly five minutes. So you play louder than this in five minutes. That was Nicodemus. Nicodemus was not an isolated teacher in his own company. He belonged to what you currently call a spiritual clan. And in the clan, all of them were notable teachers. All the other names not necessary to be mentioned. There was a convergence that they had. And according to this verse, it must have been a convergence in which they tried to evaluate the teaching ministries across the landscape. This is how we teach Pharisees. This is how they teach Sadducees. This is our emphasis that they don't believe. And, and we need, let me not go there. Because they had doctrinal differences, but all of them were in the side. Amen. May God give you understanding. I'm saying that there are certain doctrinal differences that do not demonize the other person. What you think is a much emphasized truth may be a, less emphasis, a lesser emphasized truth for that person based on the work of the Holy Spirit and based on the shape of what has been called to do. I'm not speaking of error, but I'm saying that there are some things because of what Jesus has called you to do, you are made to understand in length so that you can do your work. The other person sees them as the, the emphasized truths and the reason why it is aggravated in you is so that it can learn from you. But if we fight all the time, then no learning happens. And you find that, that over time, where no learning happens, you can't kick people out of the body of Christ. So the fight will be lasting. I am still going to insist there is a handle that everybody must be humble to receive from Jesus to deal with doctrinal error. Especially when it is from a brother who is insufficient in knowledge. Who is wrong but in sincerity. Who could be teachable if the tools are accurate. 
I'm not talking about those who are re-idol, because there's a re-idolization move in the body of Christ. And today it's not about it. Well, when we go into those matters, we'll, we'll look at them. How that you can re-idolize people, replace Jesus with. Let me not go there. That you can go to the market and buy crocs, crocs, crocs. You know, you know what they call crocs? And you say that this crocs has is the way to is the way to eternal life. And then you can sell the crocs that if you don't buy these crocs, heaven is not sure for you. Or you buy a t-shirt. Sometimes it comes as cheap as a wristband. Now this is security. Anywhere you wear this thing to, you are safe. If you don't wear it, you are vulnerable. Those things, they tamper with the strength of Jesus' cross. Because Jesus is enough. It's not bad to, to, to identify with a ministry by a wristband. But to say that a believer is not safe, so that if you were going to Lagos and you got to Oyo, and you now found out that Kai, Kai, my wristband is at home, it will look as if you are vulnerable, that there is no living savior inside you. It's only a life in the wristband. That's idolatry. And somebody must talk about it. I've told you I had a friend who had, who had four handkerchiefs. One to write exams, one to be safe, one to do. Thieves collected a bag inside this underjee, and all the handkerchiefs were in the bag. If what secures you can be successfully stolen, it means you, you are, you are missing even though you are still around. So it's not wrong, it's not wrong. It's not wrong to have a t-shirt from a church, but that t-shirt cannot replace the Lord. If I say this thing too much now, I will start fight. What? I know maybe some of you are very angry. Maybe, maybe, maybe they say there's a wristband that you are wearing that is that is like a charm. It's about to walk in it. Any some people have have a pen. That for the test, this is the pen. If that pen goes missing, it has no assurance that you'll be helped by God. My challenge to you is how can your pen be more anointed than you? Wake up! You have been re idolized. Jesus is enough. If you have a pen to, that has been blessed, it's good, it's good, it's good. And if Jesus tells me to bless your pens tomorrow, but I'll tell you that you see. You are blessed. You are blessed. You may not have one naira in your pocket. If you understand what the blessing is, you are blessed already. You are blessed. You are blessed. And some blessings take time before they show that you have nothing to show for it if you have Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is the gospel. Not Christ in things. It's you. The reason why we think things are potent is that you have not stretched. And that's why he's saying grow, grow, grow. When I start teaching on Sunday, just make sure that you go and check everything I'm teaching you. Where's Dami? I was showing, uh, you remember the discussion we had on Sunday? Maybe if I have the time to get there, I'll get there. Many things you think are impossible. Is because you have not stayed with the scriptures unto believing. A believer is not small. The one who lives with him is perfect. And so his possibilities are rounded. That's what we want to create. That miracles are everybody's things. Are you with me? You were not just saved and then the only thing they gave you was tongues. You can take on things. All of us can cast out devils. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a color thing. If you walk into your hostel and you sense demonic oppression, you can challenge it. You may not be that powerful, but you have the authority of the Christ. Those are the things I want to teach during this growth to unlock you. 
that many of us are like, we have been in the kingdom for, for 20 years, but we have refused to grow. And God is saying now he's concerned. Many of us are supposed to be teachers by now. Or are still feeding on milk. Are still looking for somebody to pray for you. And it's not bad for people to pray for you. Your chats are filled with many help means. Till now, you don't understand that if you have struggles with praying, there's a spirit that helps to pray. So if you tell brother, believe, I can't pray, help me. How do you help the person? You say, you are helped. I have savage answers for those people. It's a long list. Everybody is pressured, so everybody must push. We'll carry your own load. So I want to teach you how to master it. This man, in his conclave, had looked across the landscape and they found out that there was an extra ingredient on the ministry of Jesus. Everybody was a teacher, but Jesus was able to occasion supernatural interventions called miracles. It's like saying everybody is saved. All of us have confessed Jesus as Lord. But it looks as if there are some who operate with extra realities that the others have not come into. And sometimes the extra realities stay so long that we feel that that club is an exclusive one. Oh, those things are for them. We are just supposed to live normal lives. What you must begin to do is that you need to begin to research why. One of my very strong friends, Savior Kika, of blessed memory now, died early this year, ministered in our final year in a very strange way. Woo! And Savior respects me a lot. Bishop, Bishop, that's how they refer to me. So I crept like Nicodemus in the night. Say, my friend, what are you doing? Savior now said, ah, now you be our guy now, you know all those kind of things. I said, I'll be your guy. I hear. This kind way where you minister today is in my dreams that I'm that strong. It has become your reality. First service, you went there again, second service. Your consistency shows that you have taught something in the realms of God. You know, I say, it's not in no, uh, it's just it's just fasting. Eh? So I pray and I fast. I pray, I fast, I pray three hours every day. Three is three hours. So I know in my heart, see, ask God. Because I'm going to be fasting now. Okay. What did I say? Ask God. Who. The way of wisdom is not known to any man. That's what the Bible records. Only God knows the place of wisdom. It means that the actions that will produce expected results are only known unto God. If he's not the one inspiring it, you will do it. And it, you will still have leanness in your soul. So I now went back. So I'll be doing three hours. The great one now came and said, you are behind schedule. Eh? So you will be praying for six hours every day. But how can I do six hours? Because it was three hours in the afternoon, three hours in the middle of the night. Twelve to three, twelve to three. But we used to have lectures. After three days, we now went on strike. I now pressed. Jesus, Jesus. When I came out after the first month, I, I was like a god. So I now decided to stretch till we graduated, till we waited for youth service and throughout youth service. It became so potent that if you fix an exam at 2 o'clock, I will not flinch. I will not read for it. Meal. The faith to cancel exams was wrong. Say, that test. I say, you didn't read? My friend will say, when well, we're living together, he will say, I've forgotten his name. He's from the north. I think from Plato State. But that test no hold. Something will hold the lecturer. 
So the lecturer could come the following day and say, he was already coming and his stomach grabbed him. Well, something happened to him. It was because they were trying to interfere with an altar that was already registered in the spirit. That's how I bless to you service. I've told you my story. From day one, Satan had positioned the lady to waste me. When that one didn't work, there were many other ones. I was also battling with a shade of lust. So it wasn't just that the ladies were bad. There was a drag too that was making me temptable. But the prayers choked it. Choked it, choked it, choked it. Came out of youth service stronger than I went there. You can win. You can win. I'm not prescribing six hours of prayer for you. But you see, you, there is a wisdom in God. And that wisdom comes in the day that you first acknowledge, I am insufficient. There is so much more about me. Research what keeps other people ahead. One of the feedbacks of your research could be that what is up in operation is a grace of election. It means it's not for you. It means they are that way because God chose them for an assignment. And if he did not choose you for that assignment, you can't come to it. That's why in a way, Babalola cannot be re-entered into. Because his assignment is not your assignment. So you don't need his anointing. Are you with me? But there is a unique set of realities that should be visible in your life when you find out in God that they are not working. If you see other men working their own, though distinct, you may want to check, how are you staring the gift that is upon you? How are you ever fresh? How's in Lori? When that Yosef was to close the service, he, I saw Ebenezer go to give me a microphone. He now put his ear. He spoke to him for like three minutes. So I had a feeling that the discussion was about me. So that he spoke well, spoke well, spoke well. One of the things that he said that touched my heart, he said our expectations that after us, things will die. He's being cancelled tonight because God is showing him that he has not left men. And I said, Benisa, what was daddy telling you? He said, I was asking him, why did you meet this kind of person? And I was telling my wife when I was sharing with her, I didn't go there to be special. I went normal mood. You know, we can get used to ourselves that. The one Pastor Dela gives me reports for some of his meetings. Pastor Dela will say, I was trying to teach them something, and God just broke out. Sometimes it's because we have become used to Him that we can't draw that reality. Have I helped you? Have I helped you? Uh, say yes, say yes, uh -huh. say yes. All right. In their research to find out the difference between their teaching ministry and the teaching ministry of Christ, the first thing they found out was that Jesus was sent by God. It was not a confession that they could make in certainty about themselves because men also send teachers. Two, they found out that God was with Jesus and Jesus gave us the key to that sustained presence. I am not alone. The one that sent me is with me because I do the things that please him. So when your life pleasures God, there is a weight of the divine presence that you begin to carry that gives you an edge even in common things. Somebody say pleasing God. One of the rewards is that God is with you in a way that is not with every other person. He's with all of us, but there are ways in which God is with men. And those ways are evident when they do normal things. So everybody talks, but when someone talks, there is an extra ingredient that comes out. It means that God is with all of us, but is in a way with that person that is not with the rest. So Jesus now brings us into our labors and tells him that special area of teaching that 
produces the miraculous, that advertises being sent from God, that advertises the presence of God, is not an exclusive class. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot perceive the kingdom of God. Jesus was saying that the strength or the, the gate of my extra expressions is a gate of perception. If I know what God is doing and I believe what was told me that God is doing and I announce what God is doing, then God will be allowed to manifest what he's doing. Perception. But he was saying to him, in, I'm trying to explain what it meant, that you see, you have senses to perceive men. But you also have senses to perceive God. But until those senses are activated by a kind of life, you will only be able to perceive men. You were born only once. Men who do what I did or what I do are men who have been born twice. There is a gap of existence that you have. You, you don't need to try. A goat cannot try to become a man. A goat needs to be reborn. And until it, it can be successfully born as a man. Because these things are for men. Are you with me? These things are for men. The undoing of a goat in the day it comes to driving a car. Is that goats were not designed to. The average, the average person who comes to church. Is trying to do things. Not knowing that the things that he's trying to do. Cannot be done if you have not been birthed dimensionally. If we bring you into that new shape of existence, you will be able to do those things as natural things. The scripture not say that they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. And I said renewing, renewal of strength is exchange of strength. We take what you have and we give you what you need. And then you begin to operate with this new strength. The supernatural, but from a natural perspective. It means we can wake you up. And like you will yawn. <gasps> you can also wake up and say be healed. And it's healed. It has become common to you. Because you have the life that makes it happen. I'm trying to start this way because I can't teach growth if I'm not sure that you are saved. You are in the university. Are you with me? You might be in 100 level, 200 level, 3, 4, or 500 level, just 600 level. Okay, the master's guys. Eh? Okay, medicine. Okay, okay. Then you can be doing master's, you can be doing PhD. All of you are in the same dimension. You go to, you walk around the same area. All of you are loud tech students. Even if it's a PhD holder. Even if your lecturer starts doing PhD today. He's a student like you. So be PhD students to have matric numbers. Abi? Yeah. All of you are students. It means there are differences. But you are all in the same dimension. Though different levels. Being born again is not the experience of a level change. It's the experience of a dimensional change. It means what being born again does, it's that it brings you into a realm of higher thoughts and higher possibilities. Higher thoughts, higher possibilities. There are many different kinds of, sing of single men, right? According to Dr. Pastor Paul Energy. They are bachelors and they are lambda. Okay, stay. They are bachelors and they are manchelos. That's what daddy says. Like uh, Pastor Timothy now, he's a bachelor. Before me and Mr. Taiwo married, we were manchelos. It means I've got into an age that 
your not being married as a male has become a concern. Uh, were people not concerned? Even if what you lacked was money, somebody will say, ah, all of us are buying say. If you now ask them, kill all of them, say, ah, but if I are in it. You are not even concerned that I have no food to eat. You are just, that's a man cello. But you see, both the bachelor and the manchelo live in the same dimension. Singles. According to this, our legal code, court scriptures, there are benefits or responsibilities that both the bachelor and the manchelo cannot enter into until they experience a dimensional change. So I'm saying that Oriomi and Pastor Timo are not in the same dimension. Uh, we need to challenge Pastor Timo. He will soon become a mantelo. So, may God give you speed. Oh yeah, Jerry, speak to your friend. Speak to him. Lay, lay hands and legs upon him. Uh, is it a lie, Pastor Oriomi? When you wake up in the morning, you can hold your phone and say, oh, good morning, God bless you. How, you. how was your sleep? You can know how the sleep is. You see? You can know. And that's dimensional existence. There are things that Pastor Timo can only think about. You have answers to those things. Because you live in a realm of higher thoughts, higher experiences, if Pastor Timo makes money now, he can think about a shoe. If you think about a shoe, you need to be whipped. <laughs> yes. It means you are even supposed to spend money differently. That's higher thoughts. So if you are born again, and your life advertises the realities of someone who is not, there is a growth problem and you must be concerned that's what the Lord is saying you must be concerned that Jesus lives here now and there's nothing different about him there is first the sin iniquity thing but you see when we have solved those problems there is also the life expression thing are you with me there is a life expression thing. When you speak for 10 minutes, we expect, and that's a long time, we expect that in 10 minutes, there are certain things that must hit us. I was telling them on Sunday, I was supposed to have 50 minutes, they gave me 40 minutes. So I labored into 35 minutes, and I saw people beginning to stand up, pray, and I said, I didn't come for an impartation service. And in case you are sick, I'm not going to pray for the sick. If the words I came to speak are the words of Jesus, it means what I communicated, the spirit and life. If you are sick, now you are healed. And I heard people say they were healed. There is a limitedness that natural life brings. And Jesus was saying to Nicodemus, you have desire. But your desire will not, your, you have expectations, but your expectations are already cut short. You cannot have fulfilled expectations because those expectations are not for you. To so now come into that new dimension of existence called in Christ and still live like somebody is outside, you are a cause for concern. And sometimes the only way is to grow. Is to grow. How many of us here were born goats? I know you are obstinate, but even your obstinacy is not traceable to bad. They say that a goat is obstinate. How many of us was born a goat? Nobody. How many of us were born men? Or oh, you were born a man? I'm not gender sensitive now. You were born a man. Raise your hand. If you are not, we might need to gather the pastors to labor in some bit of prayer so that we discern your identity. You were born a man, raise your hands. Okay. At birth, how many of you could solve algebra? Look, there are geniuses who can. 
How many of you could solve algebra? You could do A. If A plus B equals to 5 and B is 2, what is A? That you, you were, the day you were born, there was a narrative around your life that you were that intelligent at birth. Please raise your hand. I, we need you for certain things. Nobody. How many of you struggled with algebra? Okay. okay. Maybe I should have. How many of you did not struggle with algebra? How many of you love mathematics? How many of you, you, how many of you cost the people that design mathematics? Ah, okay. Now, even those who love mathematics, who were very proficient or who are very proficient in the course, were not born knowing it. It was developed capacity. It was developed capacity. And that's what I'm introducing tonight. Let me go through my notes. One of the truths of our new birth a truth that we also see established in natural birth is that or says that though we were fully born, it means everyone here was born a man. Though we were fully born, we were not born fully grown. I know it's some bit of logic, so you may have to settle with it. Though you were fully born, born so full that we could recognize that what this woman gave birth to is a boy, what this woman gave birth to is a girl. This is a human being, not an animal. You were fully born, so full that we could identify you. No one was born fully grown. Help your friend. Uh, see, see, I, I, Jesus, thank you. No one was born fully grown. It's one of the truths of our natural life, but it's also one of the truths of our divine life. That in the day you got born again, you were fully born of God. And I'm announcing to you that you are fully born of God. Whether, maybe you will just give your life to Christ tonight or you want to postpone till Sunday. If, if, if the grace gate is still open till Sunday and you choose to give your life to Christ on Sunday, you are not less fully born than I am. We were both fully born. Are you with me? But none of us was born fully grown. It means that our birth was actually an invitation onto a partnership. A partnership that advances you in the realities of who you already are. I am born of God. But at new birth, you may not be able to fully discern all of the realities of God that I am potentiated with and it's because I was not born fully grown because growth is a revealer growth is a revealer when we were all born fully born we didn't know who could sing all of us had only capacity to produce a sound Where's balloon? we didn't know that you could sing even the first time I saw you, I didn't know that you could sing. That day I first greeted yourself, you don't even smile. And so I have to tell my wife, I have concern. concern. Is it wrong to say good day to a beautiful sister? And I'm not saying anything. She said, no, it's, it's okay. I said, but she, she did not even smile. Maybe she was not happy that day, but she just went. So the second time I greeted her, she did not smile. So I started casual greeting. Until then, she now sang here. And I said, ah. So behind this straight face is, is a sound from heaven. And today was stronger than that other day. So I'm encouraged. It means there's something you are doing. Stay at that thing. 
Every man will have a day of showing. Every man will have a show. And if God wills, it will be from this altar to the world. See, I told you so. Where's John? Okay, he's not in church today. I had calls last week. I had calls from Lagos. I had calls from UK. Who is that guy? Who is that? Who is that guy? I say he's one of that guy is one of you. See, I sound talk to my spirit. He sound did this. He sound did this. So I'll be doing that from time to time. Pull out somebody. Pull out somebody. It's a father's job to announce his children when they are ready. So if we do another meeting now, we will not put John again. And I hope he's listening to this sermon. Because we want to see how he will manage the last one. If he carries it well, we'll pull him again. And then we'll now start traveling with him. So that before I minister, now say, I have a son. He can send you to heaven. <laughs> like my father will call my brother. Say, he's a, rain, he's a rainmaker. And so he will now make rain. And after a while, he will now join. In the real sense, when you are submitted, I heard Bishop Oedipo say something recently. He said, when I was well, fathered by um, Kenneth Hagin, he said, I never took a charge or a prayer, led prayers in his ministry. But you see, what a father's role is, is to function like a mother ego. Feed your children. Feed your children. Feed your children. When you perceive that they have grown, they have become used to being fed. It is the mother ego who builds the nest that destroys the nest. And destroying the nest is saying to them, you were not designed to be nested. You were designed to fly. So you pull out the nest. And if they don't agree, they cling to you. You take them to a high place, then you drop them. They will show, 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 show. They're about to die. You come back, you carry them. What you're trying to do is to train them to use their wings. And after a while, you leave them. When they're almost hitting the ground, they will be awakened to the consciousness that we can fly. That's what I'm about testing my pastors to. Go for that meeting. Go for that meeting. And in increasing order, there'll be more. I'll be tipping the meetings, tipping the meetings, tipping the meetings. So there's a campus invasion there. Go, go, go and do that one. Say, oh, no. That meeting looks somehow. Okay, it means, so go for this one. Until they're encouraged to spread their own wings and fly. Eagles don't boast in how many of their offspring are in the nest. It's how many of their offspring are already flying on their own. That's what makes an eagle company strong. Amen. So, that's the concept. I've laid it down one of the truths that when you were born, when you became born of God, you were fully born, but you were not born fully grown. All of us were born as children into the economy of God, and as an infant, we need to deliberately subject ourselves to progressions across developmental stages. From a cry which is common to a sound. And if you are called to the singing ministry, for example, there are certain things that you do to yourself, skills-wise. There are certain things that you do to yourself spirit-wise, especially if your area of expression is on an altar or at an altar. There are weights of God that you go through and you keep doing them again and again and again and again, subjecting yourself to developmental processes so that you can become fully grown even though you were already fully born. We will not see the manifestation of everyone who is saved. And the reason will not be that they were not fully born is that many chose not to subject themselves to developmental stages and so because they never fully grew, they will not be seen. So there will be those who live what you call the, the common Christian life and there will be those who live the extraordinary Christian life. The gap will be growth 
So can you scream that word again? Grow. That's what the Lord is sucking us into. What age you were when you gave your life to Christ is not important. If you came in at 30 or 40 or you came in at 6 or 7, every one of us is born as a child. You came in a spiritual babe in Christ and must take on the responsibility to grow in the things of God. One of the most commonly used verses of scripture is 1 Peter 2, 1 to 2. I'll just go as far as I can. 1 Peter 2, 1 to 2. The Bible says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice, and these are manifestations of the old life, a dimension of existence, and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings as newborn babes this utterance must may have come to 60 70 year old but we all entered as babes as newborn babes desire so it's not just this it's not just comparing is giving us an instruction. He's saying that when you come in here, you are a newborn babe. And there is a demand for newborn babes. It is to desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. The word ass was used in case you don't know what you looked like when you came in. You may need to find out what a neonate looks like. They are learning to do virtually everything. Learning to master directions, where sounds come from. Learning to master focus, knowing particular voices. After a while, they know those who care for them and those who just hang around them. Learning to sense hunger. Because when they were within, there was a flow of new trends that was not built into cravings. Now they need to master what hunger feels like and, and what is the appropriate notification when you are hungry. But you are not hungry and do like this. When you are hungry, you release a cry. It's, it's an educational system. They will learn it by experience. And with that, they can maximize Humanity, even though they are already human. Desire the sincere milk of the word. Just like they desire breast milk, that ye may grow thereby. It's also to show us that when you come into the kingdom, if you are not growing and you are engaging in, in the writings, it means what you are feeding on is not the sincere milk. Because the end of the sincere milk is growth. So can you ask yourself, am I growing? Ask yourself, ask yourself. So who wants to answer my question? Are you growing? Are you better in your perspectives of God and his kingdom? Are you handling kingdom realities better than last year? Do, I'm not just saying do you pray longer. I'm just saying do you pray better? Long is also one of the, the indexes of better praying. Well, like I was sharing the house yesterday. I said, if you're only praying and you're not, you, okay, so do you pray? Say, we pray. Do you start, have you studied scriptures today? The answers were not too much in the affirmative. So I now said, mm, how can you say that you have a prayer life when you are not studying the word of God? Don't you know that the confidence that we have in God is that if we ask According to his will, he hears us. You don't know the will, but you are praying. So what are you praying? It means your experience of, ans of not no answer to prayers can be traced. Not from God's unwillingness, but that God is deaf to your cry. Because if you don't pray according to his will, that prayer, is the answer is not being delayed. The prayer's point was not heard. So forget about God's answer. So are you growing? 
growing. Your roommate has been living with you for two years and your roommate is a true test of your growth because your roommate can tell us what you look like by interaction and what you look like now. And if Christ is not being formed in you, if you are still that very... Find the word. If not because I used to see you in church, I, didn't, I would not even believe that I am a Christian. You know those kind of things. Te basi mo mo man lo church. In bani wo keferi niye. That person has been saying that thing for three years, and you claim that you are growing. Nothing is dying that is earthy. Nothing is being 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 embodied that is heavenly. It means you are not growing, and this series is for you because you were fully born, but Christ will not be seen if you are not growing. And it doesn't happen. By impartations. I wish it was possible, Pastor Diola, to walk into church and say, in the name of Jesus, grow into Christ, grow into Christ, and boom, boom, everybody grows into Christ. But that growth is not going to be organic. That's what people are looking for. If we anoint you and say in the name of Jesus, that we anoint you in the name of the Lord to do this thing, even in the, in the use of the anointing, you will need to grow. There are consecrations you need to incorporate. There are wisdoms of that anointing that you have to put in place. Oh, help us grow. Help us grow. There's a kind of church that me I see. And I think that Jesus has answered my prayer with this series. If you apply your heart, one of the ways to blow out this place is that everyone who is already here grows. Because growth can be, can be measured even by people who are not believers. You started with a knowing Jesus is with me. And then your roommate wakes up in the middle of the night one day and says, sir, there's something here. It means you, you have the, 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 the measure has increased. And then one day you walk into class and the question will be, where do you go to? I'm telling now. The strength of evangelism is not a tract that says Jesus loves you. It's the testimony of a life that Jesus has changed. We know who you used to be, but you have outgrown those things. Because Christ being better expressed in you is a byproduct of growth. When I was a child, spake like a child, talk like a child, did things as a child, but now when I am grown, I have put away childish things. It means living the Christ life, having jettisoned the things of the world is proof of growth. So there is a call upon the lives of every one of us in this season. And I want to encourage you. I need to close in a few minutes. I want to encourage you. I'm just trying to lure you into the series. I need to encourage you that if you choose not to cooperate with these developmental processes, some other people will. And if they do, they will have maximized this new dimension. When it comes to growth, people leave themselves. If you went to a proper school, not everybody was promoted. Abi. There are some schools that government clothes them, they feed them. And so government is afraid to, to do it twice. So even those who score zero still go to the next class. Abby? Are we going to keep him in school for seven years? Oh man, oh man, I promote him. But in a proper school, you can do one, and in primary school, they don't rusticate people for, for repeating. Abby? It's in university, they now say, we'll give you a certificate of attendance. So there's something they used to call that thing. I advise to advise to withdraw. And you can even say no to the advice. Abby? Say, say I'm, it's an advice. It's not, it's not command. Say, I'm not withdrawing. I'll stay. I said to Minister Dami, I said there are things I'm currently learning in God that is facilitating my growth. And I'm seeing the things that I do affect people differently. 
But I don't wait, want to wait till I've known everything. I want us to journey together. That's the Moses syndrome. Moses was not going to go to Canaan and now use a megaphone to say, Hey, my boy. A true leader must understand that there are days in which he must journey. He's ahead. It means he, 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 he traffics with a taste of God's invitations, a taste of God's um, encounters. But he does not want to experience it alone. He brings his people. And I'm asking, because I know that there's a space in front of you, an empty space. And that space was not designed to be empty. God is saying, move into that next space. In this day, you cannot hold back. That's why this series is on. We want to grow in Christ-likeness. We want to grow in prayers. We want to grow in faith. We want to grow in the word. We want to grow in power. Those are my subtopics. We want to grow in the supernatural. I know there's some dimension of the supernatural that you are touching now. But you can go into greater lengths. So I was listening to one of my teachers. And that's where I will close. Dami, you remember our discussion? John chapter 8. That's where I will close. 31 to 34. There about. Yeah. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. And I want you to pay attention. These were Jews who had believed. They are like you and I who have believed on him. If ye continue in my word. And continuing in the word does not just mean reading the word. Ha, can I do this tonight? Okay. I'll, I'll come back to this verse on Sunday, but let's just go on. If you continue in my word, to continue in the words of Christ is not just to read the word. It's that the word becomes a life that you are living. You sustain the doing of his words. Then are ye my disciples indeed. Whenever the Bible adds the word indeed, it means that it's a reality that can be falsified. In all truth. You are my disciples. Next verse. And ye shall know the truth. Now, the definition for truth here is sourced from his word. And the knowledge is also wide range. Remember John 17, 17, sanctify them by thy truth, thy word is truth. It's saying that you shall come into the experience of my word. The reality of that word. And that reality will establish your freedom. It will make you free. So the truth does not set free. What breaks the padlock of your cage is the sun. If the sun shall set you free, then you shall be free indeed. But we can break the padlock of your cage and you can remain in the cage. Because you have not encountered the utterances, the speakings that tell you that you are not bound. So you can be saved and spend all, every time you collect salary, you become sick. It's a circle. And then you use all the money to heal this, to, to cure yourself. And then when you are ultimately well, the money will have finished. Only to work for another one month and then there's a beast that, that drinks out your salary in sicknesses. You can be tongue talking and be like that. It will be because you have not embraced freedom indeed. So I was sharing what that my teacher was saying. He's an East African teacher. And he said, Okay, let's read to the end so that you see what it looks like. Let's go. They answered him, like somebody may be answering tonight. We be Abraham's seed. And that sounds like pidgin English, right? Abina. We be Abraham's seed. And we're never in bondage to any man. Meanwhile, when this comment was made, they forgot in history that they were not just slaves in Egypt. But even during this time, Israel was already under Roman rule. 
they had become so comfortable in, in the, under the Roman rule that they could no longer feel their bounds. There was a day I was going to go out, Pastor Diola, and I was looking for my wristwatch. I looked everywhere, search, search, search. You know where the wristwatch was? On my hand. The wristwatch, I had worn it so much that it had become dead weight. It had become one with my body. So I was looking for it and back. I don't know, maybe I now hit my hand or something. Ah. This is no miracle. It was always here. There is a way you can be so accustomed to limitations that limitations now become normal. Even if somebody says, Eshunikini yo, say, Eshuo, Shebe Yaniwa, we are human beings, it's normal. Say, but it's a monthly thing, no? Say, eh. I don't know mosquitoes and the mosquitoes I don't know I think they came from hell this time because are there plenty on your end too so I had to tell my body and there's a life here that no matter the quantity of mosquitoes that bite me I am first not going to think that I will have malaria and in case they deposit that plasmodium organism in my body, it is by whose stripes you were healed. It means I have sufficiency of healing virtue to quench the strength of mosquito bites. The only thing I detest from mosquitoes is the rehearsals they do. You know why I said they came from hell? Have you found out that our insecticides are seemingly impotent? Who are the people in biology? Please, we need you to do a research as to where they came from and what genetic modifications have happened in them that have made them immune to those things. Somebody was marketing one dust today that used to kill cockroaches and I told that person, the last time my wife poured that in a container, or in a corner, I saw a cockroach pass through it and run. <laughs> he had the only one that is not growing. Yes, because there are things that you will blaze through. They will think it will take you down. And it's because you have, have grown susceptibility. I'm not trying to hype you, but a Christian is not like the guy on the road. No. What gives you that? You will pray or you will fast. But I'm saying foundationally, what gives you an edge over the guy on the road is not prayer. It's a life. It's amongst ourselves that will be differentiated by engagement. It's not between us and them. A weak man is still stronger than a goat. Wake up! Even if you are sick and you're walking like this, if a rat sees you, Omar Asani, are you not with me? A lizard will not say because you are sick, and you are dragging your feet that it will stay. What challenges it is your quality of life. How much more when you have the life of God? Our witness is weak, and the flags of God are no longer hoisted high because his people will not do not know and they will not understand. So they walk on in darkness, and all the foundations of the earth are out of place. But I have said that ye are gods. And sons of the most high but they shall die like men they shall fall like one of the princes god forbid we're never in bondage to any man how sayest thou we shall be free now verse 34 then i'll just share that thing and we'll go 34 34 help me jesus answered very very i say unto you whosoever committed sin He's the servant of sin. The concept of sin is, miss, is to miss a mark of existence. It means if your life operates below par, then you are a slave. So, my teacher began to create demarcations. And I'm going to use his demarcations, use a few other things, and then we're going to go. He said that um, everyone that is saved is free. Yes or no? Why? Because salvation advertises freedom 
by the activity of the sun. If the sun sets you free, you shall be free indeed. So everyone who is truly saved is truly free. Are you with me? But not all Christians are free to marry. That's what he said. Receive the challenge and see it as an opportunity to labor. Not every Christian is free to marry. That day you decide, I want to marry now. It's not every Christian who can marry. You are free. But there is a truth you need to know that gives you the possibility of marriage. The question will be, do you know it? I'm dealing with a few situations. Some people say, oh, this person proposed to me, broke my heart, broke my heart, broke my heart. Now the case is, the, the family has come together to say, I is his spiritual husband. I, I, I'm not saying that that reality does not exist. But do you know the truth that establishes you beyond the bondages that keep people in singleness? That should be your next pursuit. So, all, all Christians are free, but not everybody is free enough to marry. So, you need to find the truth of God that establishes marriage and you can flow to it. Meanwhile, in the midst of those who are free to marry, not everybody is free to give birth. There will still be some advertised deprivation. And every time something is advertised as a deprivation, it means there is a truth you are yet to unlock. I want to establish everyone as a seeker of these words. Seek ye out of the book of the law and read none of these things, not your thoughts, none of these things, not what every other person is doing. Anything you find here is failure proof. None of these things shall fail. None of them shall lack their mate. The mate of the written word is a fulfillment. For his, his spirit for in mouth it had commanded it means God has spoken them and his spirit had gathered them so he now said okay um, so not every Christian is free to marry not every Christian who is free to marry is free to give birth and not every Christian who is free to give birth is free to give birth to a kind of children because there's what you also call kind of children all children come with an errand, but they are errands, and they are errands. Jesus was not of any other kind. So there were people in the days of Jesus who were free to give back to children, but their life expectancy was cut short because the child came. Not all children are equal. And if you need two witnesses to establish it, there were many children in the days of Moses, but all of them were wasted because it was Moses the sorcerer's son. That's what they saw. That one was going to rise among them that will bring deliverance. And they decided to kill, 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 kill. And they killed for a few years. But the deliverance survived. So Moses had no age mate. Jesus also did not have. Their mothers were given the privilege not to just give back to children, but to give back to a kind of children. Samuel was a kind of child. David announced that it was an iniquity that he was born. It means that the, the, the relationship that gave birth to him was not an accurate relationship. In spite of that, he is still today Israel's greatest king. It means to that illicit relationship. I, to that illicit relationship. To that illegitimate relationship. A king child was given the ways of God and not your ways. Israel's wisest king came out of a strange relationship. When you repent of the act, of the act, focus on the gift. When you repent of the act, focus on the gift. Because the act cannot produce the gift. And I'm saying this in the house and online. The act cannot produce the gift. Many have engaged in the act and the gift did not came, did not come. The, the gift comes because it is time to come.
So every Christian is free. And free Christians do ministry. But not every minister is, is free enough to do ministry at a level. So it's not a time to say, oh no, maybe it's diabolical. No, maybe it's doing something. Maybe you don't tend, you don't shake any Find the truth. All Christians are free. But not everybody is free enough to be a university student. And not every Christian who is free enough to be a university student he is free enough to excel. Truth! And the embodiment of truth is growth. If you know more, you will manifest more. If you know more, you will manifest more. If you know more, you will manifest more. But you need to get to a point of conviction that the reason why I'm not doing more is that I don't know enough. And so you become a seeker. You, you, you settle down. The Bible says by true strong desire, a man separated himself to intermeddle with all knowledge. Look for scriptures. Tomorrow night I'm going to be preaching in Olabisi and Obanjo University and the theme of the conference is dominion. They wanted me to have more than one night. I said, I can only have one. They've been preaching since last week, Thursday, when the conference started. If I, open, if I close my eyes, I open it in sleep, I can preach on dominion because I preached too many times. When I woke up this morning, I said, Lord, okay, I'm done with the learning thing. Overnight, I was done with this sermon. I said, now dominion. He said, I want you this night to look through every verse of scripture that carries the word dominion. I will teach you anew. You have my night. I said, well, that's, that's how I'm going to spend my night. I had a sermon. The sermon in, what was the sermon in the Lord? Behold this glory. I had a sermon prepared. After I finished my, my America conference um, session, three, I finished about 6.50 something a.m. into Sunday morning. I said, Lord, so this evening I'm going to be preaching Behold the Glory. Immediately I came out of that my small study room and I was going to sleep. The Lord began to speak to me. So I sat up till like seven past seven. I started penning down, penning down, penning down the things. So I had a sketch. I knew if I flowed with that sketch, the meeting would be strong. God's will will be done. When I entered the public transport there at um, the Aladdin Finish Station area, the Lord said, that thing I said to you in the morning is for another meeting. Now listen to me. So, I, he began to bring other scriptures and I began to study again. The new sermon was between this filling station and Gerarimi. And the house was on fire. I have so many sermons. I think on Thursday, yes, the FCA a Coca meeting revival on Friday. I'll be with um, uh, Minister Paul Tomisi for their minister's conference. I have minister's conference sermons, but God says he wants to teach me something else. So I'm already open to that education. I'm already learning. I know that on Saturday, there's a deeper life conference in, um, in Unilag, Faith and Fire conference. I have two sessions that day about the cumulative of about four and a half hours there. About, um, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching on um, maybe the baptism of fire and the believer or something. Meanwhile, I need to ask you some questions because <laughs> I want to know if there are boundaries in that meeting. You know, but, but I, I, I have many sermons on that topic, but I, the Bible says to me, will he guide in understanding? It means I'm going to approach the Lord saying, I understand but from scriptures, by doctrine, what the baptism of the Holy Ghost and power as different from the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire mean. Because what Jesus baptized sees with is Holy Ghost and fire. What he was baptized with was Holy Ghost and power. So there are two different kinds of baptism. The common denominator is the Holy Spirit, but they are separated into fire and power. And fire does not mean power. So a fire conference may not be a power conference. You need to understand what fire does. Because there's, a, there's, a, there's an interpretation to a fire in Bible language. That's what it does. Are you with me? He shall baptize thee with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Whose fire is in his hand and he shall utterly purge his flow. That's the context. So what, what do they use fire to do? Purge it.
a clean up so that they can be a sitting upon. Meanwhile, Jesus didn't need that clean up. He just moved into potency. I know those things. But I don't want to teach what I've known. I want to sit down again. Teach me, teach me. That's growth. That's growth. Because we may be slaves to the degree of the knowledge of God that we have, everyone must make up their minds to press into the knowledge of God. If Jesus studies, what's your name, my brother, in Gucci? Glory. Your name is Glory. That's good. G for Gucci. G for Glory. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. If Jesus studies, you will marry. Or you're already married. What level now? Ah, you have almost finished school now. Be thinking marriage. Too. Are you married? Are you in school here? What do you do? You are staff here. Ah. God bless you, sir. You lecture? Okay. Okay. That's a good one. But are you married? But you have plans to marry. No, not your head very well. A hair. I've heard people say, no, I'm not married. And I'll tell them, don't say before an angel that. I was joking. Yeah. Don't. I know you have many thoughts, but the fact that you said it here, there are possibilities that come. Believe me. Ask this brother. He maybe was afraid at the point too. Have you gone hungry since you got married? He that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. A good thing. A ben the word good is beneficial. It means advantageous. It means profitable. So a wife is an addition. And it's a sign of favor from the Lord. So plan to marry. Plan. Agreed. Good. You will need to now go into scriptures. And find God's revealed truth. That puts you in that position. That revealed truth will give you wisdom for headship. That revealed truth will give you vision for headship. That revealed truth will give you resources for headship. That truth is so strong that even if things are scarce, because it came from heaven. See, the Bible says that which is from above is where? It's above all. It will create a different season that in the midst of hardness, your testimonies will be different. For the scripture says, and that's where I close, eat thou honey. For it is sweet. And the honeycomb because it is refreshing. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto you. For when thou hast found it, there shall be a reward. And your expectations shall not be cut short. Irrespective of the climate, your expectations will be upheld. So it's a time to grow. The things you felt were exclusive need to be brought into common zone. And then you labor to find the wisdom that unlocks them. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. And I choose the way of the Lord. Yes. The name of the way now is growth. I choose the way of the Lord. Who is closing us? Oh, the way of the Lord is the way. Yada na ne na shaban no hata. Kavari na 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 no se si se se pada na na te zusa. Play, but do not run. Memron te vahaina. The sing we pray. I want you to consciously choose His way. If you are inviting to growth, then we say yes. I will grow. I choose to subject myself to the developmental stages that produce this life in greater dimension. Santa Vita Tata Randi Keti Keteki Mankoti Andas Katwa Tashila Ram Suvili Atata Tata Tata Kadive Bondo Kofetei Senuri Akamai Epinde Liketi Besamba Rusa Shaitebrete Kofetapa 
Yeah. 